Nasiha for the people who waste so much time on social media. My nasiha is don't waste time on social media. What can I say to you? It is the fitna of our era. It's the fitna of our era. People are always on social media. Now, it's true that you have people of knowledge who use social media in a good way. Yani that they are putting up the rules, putting up ilm on social media, articles on social media, you know, quotes on social media. All of that is khair. If that is what you are doing when you're on social media and you're benefiting, 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 no problem. That your whole day and night is just benefit. Even though you can't beat books. There is nothing better than a book. Right? And people say, well, those are going to disappear. No. These things will disappear. Inshallah, those will remain. The kutub, there is nothing like reading a book. Get into the habit of reading books, physical paper in your hand. Just like today, I'm reading from notes, papers. If I get stuck sometimes and I quickly have to give a dose, yeah, I'll take the iPad out or something. But that's not the origin. The origin is books. So don't waste your time on social media because the thing about social media is that it's built to make you an addict. It's addictive. So when you look at, for example, uh, Instagram. So someone sends you a link and you think you're learning a cooking recipe of how to roast some chicken. So they do this high-speed chicken cooking thing, right? It takes about 30 seconds of learning chicken banadi. Roast. As soon as it finishes, the way that they've developed this software or this social media app is that it automatically moves to the next one knowing that you're a person who has been looking at chicken for the last three months. So they say, Chalo, he caught chicken, he's got it. Maybe we'll give him a dikka this time or something. And it's addictive. So then before you know it, you've just spent 45 minutes watching people making chicken for 14 different ways. That's how they work. And you, you do the same with everything else. And that can also, of course, be haram. Can also be haram. So let's say a young man, he says, marriage partner. Imagine the amount of mess you can get into with that one. An 18-year-old, he looks into Instagram, or I don't know, TikTok, or Joe Bihar, and he says, looking for a marriage partner, Muslim. It's not that it makes any difference these days, Muslim, non-Muslim. You see the amount of facade that Muslims are causing in the world today in terms of social media. So he thinks, to satisfy my own iman, me Muslim Looking for marriage partner, Muslim. And what he's looking at is haram. All of it is haram. So it's 30 seconds, and then the media moves on to something else. And then he looks again, looks again. Before he knows it, three o'clock in the morning, it's Habibi Dekraya. All night he spent in Kabair. And you know, I don't even want to mention what else he could be doing. Where that leads and where that goes. Social media is made like that. And you know, social media, these social media apps like TikTok and Instagram and even Facebook and the way that they've developed them, a lot of the focus is around women. To make women addicted to it. Right? So women get addicted and women are more prone to social media psychosis, because it is a psychosis, it's a mental issue with social media. Women are more prone to become addicted to social media than men. After the women, it is men who have effeminate qualities. And they're looking for the same things that women are looking for, but slightly more from a manly perspective. And then it goes, the silk gets wider and wider. So my, my advice to you is, even though the most visited of filth on the website is by men, right? As far as filth is concerned, and, and I think all of you know what I'm talking about, the most visit, visited filth on the internet is done by men, not by women. But the addiction to social media, by and large, is women. Women get addicted. Whether it's makeup, your clothing, or, you know, whatever it is. Joby hair. Women. So, get yourselves off it. I would say, delete Instagram. Delete Facebook. 
and delete TikTok. That's step one. Up until you are married with four children. How's that? By that time, hopefully those companies have dissolved and gone bankrupt. <laughs> right? But on a serious level, delete TikTok. I don't have TikTok. I don't have Insta. I don't have it on my phone. And I do a lot of work online, as you know, through the website and other channels. But I don't have Insta uh, as an app. I don't have it. It's not that, I, that if someone sells they say, well, you know, like some of the Marakis have an Instagram account. It's not that I won't visit it on the browser. But generally, TikTok, absolutely not. I'm not. I have nothing to do with TikTok. Actually, I don't even know how it works, except through a, one of these documentaries that I saw about how these apps are developed. So delete Insta. If your wife has Insta, take your phone off her and say, my wife, I'm going to do something that will show how much I love you. <laughs> she goes, what? Give me your phone and I'll show you how much I love you. She gives you the phone, unlock it, unlocks it. Delete, delete, delete. And tell her, if you need something, go to the web browser. Go to salafisounds.com. Go to salafipubs.com. Dot com. Go to troid.ca. Go to maktabasalafia.org. Right? Go to abu iyad.com. Go to abu khadija.com. Go to these websites and you will get benefit, inshallah. Inshallah. And if you speak, obviously, if you have access to the Arabic language, then you've got Fawzan and Bin Baz and Ibn Thaymeen and Rabi'a.net and how many other. So do her that favor. She says, that's, that's your present. Say yes. Now let's go for dinner.